Devon Monk. Welcome to Devon Monk's Works and Worlds. Today I'm going to do a little more knitting, see if we can move our project forward that we started a little bit ago. This is um, a unicorn doorstop. There isn't really a pattern for this. I'm modifying another pattern, um, Norman the Dorman Gnome for your home. I think that's what the pattern is called. Um, and I'm going to modify it and turn it into a little uh, doorstop unicorn because in my latest book, Dime a Demon, I have a unicorn. So I thought it would be fun to make something that went along with the book and that when I'm done knitting it, I can give it away to one of my viewers here. So when we were last knitting the unicorn, we didn't have this cool split screen where you can see my face and you can see my hands. Hello, hello. At the same time, I'm giving that a shot, see if we like it. Uh, if so, I'll try to keep doing it this way. So, but you're going to watch me instead of looking at you. I'm pretty often going to be looking over here at my hands and at my knitting. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be all that interesting to see my face during this, but we'll give it a try once. So when you last saw the knitting and the continuing story of the unicorn that would be a doorstop, um, we had six rows knitted on our double pointed needles here. I'm going to adjust something real quick here so I can see this a little better. And um, it was creating material, basically, a nice flat. And remember, what we're doing is we're building in around. So you can see this is a cup, right? See that? It's kind of a triangle because it's on three needles. When I uh, knit in the round, when I use double pointed needles, I like to use three with the working stitches and one to work off on. Some people like to do four and and five and that, that gets confusing to me. I just like three and one if, if, if it works with the pattern and most patterns it does. So um, I have knitted up a little more since the sixth row, which I think was somewhere like right around here. I've knitted up to um, row 13, something like that on the, on the gnome pattern that we're going to modify. This is still pretty small, you know, mm large egg maybe kind of size and this needs to be a doorstop so the further out we go adding more stitches the bigger around our project is going to be right our unicorn is going to be and I think this is still a little small and I'd like it to be a little bit bigger unicorn because right now this isn't going to stop a lot of doors not not quite how we want it to although I don't want to make a big huge <laughs> take up the entire house unicorn either I mean not today maybe someday but not right now so uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue on increasing a couple more rows and then we're going to look at uh, stuffing it and weighing it down and then we are going to switch colors because I want the top of the unicorn to be in a different color. So I'll show you how I switch colors in the round. And that's when we're going to start really getting the modifying on. We're going to work some short rows, I think. Let's see how I'm going to give it a shot. And I haven't done German short rows before, so I thought, why not try something that you've never tried before and film it for everyone to watch you try it the first time? So I'm going to do that. So um, I also brought myself a little water to try to keep my voice going. Uh, it's been a very hot day today in old sunny Oregon. Um, and so we know that uh, summer's on the way. Although I think we get a few more rainy, cooler days before we're going to really hit the blast of heat here. And yeah, it does get hot in Oregon. I think it was 90 Fahrenheit today. It's pretty warm. Okay, so uh, enough about the weather. We're gonna just hop right back into the unicorn here. Gripping, isn't it? This is gripping. Okay, so I think we were on row 13. I'm gonna take a look at the, our Norman uh, pattern just to see how many rows before I increase. I think it's every two rows we're increasing. So let me peek over here for a second. It says to increase. Let's see, did we increase on the last row? No, we did not. So essentially how this is working on the increase row is increase round. I'm working in the round. I know you call it in the round. It's just in my head I learn knitting flat. So I tend to default back to all of the flat knitting terms. So when you knit flat, you know, you're knitting in rows back and forth. And in, when you knit in the round, you're knitting obviously in a round. Uh, so if I say row, I mean round <clears throat> for this project. <laughs> I'll probably do a flat project and then I'll stay in the round the entire time. I'll have some excuse for that too. Okay, so here's a knit one. 
and now we're going to knit front and back. I'm going to pull this right up to the camera. I didn't do this last time. I'm going to show you how to knit front and back in a stitch. Let's see if we can get it in decent light. That looks kind of decent. I don't know what focus on it. Maybe the light is a little too bright. I'm going to tip it down. Oop. Oh, see, there's my light. Hang on here. Oh, where can we see it? Good. There, there, there. That's good. Ish. Kind of. Sort of. Okay, good. Okay, knit front and the back of a stitch. So here's our stitch. It goes, you know, obviously around this needle right here. See that? Let's take it. So the stitch goes all the way around that needle. And I'm going to knit into this front part of it. And I'm going to knit into this back part of it, right back here. So the stitch that goes around. So first we're going to knit into the front, which is what you would think. This is regular knitting. Oh, and by the way, this is continental. I did check it out that how I hold my yarn is continental, not English. So yeah, I was talking about that last time. Okay, so we just knit into the front of the stitch and usually you would just pull it off and that would be a knit stitch. But because we're increasing, we want to make this one stitch into two stitches. Now what we're going to do is tip it and here in the back of the stitch, see here's the front of the stitch. Here in the back of the stitch, ooh, ooh, right here, we're going to also knit. And that was, I was saying last time, it looks like a pearl um, when you get it done because it has a little wrap around it. So let's look at that. So now we knit into the front of it with this stitch and we knit into the back of it with that stitch. And you can tell that this stitch back here, like I said before, is a knit in the back because it has this little uh, bar across it right there. And this has a, it's a little difficult to see, but this has a V and that has the bar. So we've increased, slowest increase ever. Okay, now we're back to, to knitting. So, how's it going? Things are going good here, I am happy to announce. I am, have finished Dime a Demon um, to the point of it's off to copy edits and it's off to proofs. So I don't usually do those two processes at once, but I'm trying to get this book out quick. So we're going to smoosh some of my processes together and see if we can't uh, still get a nice, clean, uh, readable book. Um, with just two things happening at once to make it that nice clean book instead of doing one part and then waiting a while and doing the second part. I'll pull my yarn for a second here. Um, so yes, I'm very, oh gosh, so happy that this book is out, or almost out, that it is done so that it can be out soon. Um, so here at the end of this round, we have two stitches left. I'm going to knit front and back in that one and then just knit in that one. And that's our increase for this needle. And then we're going to mo move on to the next needle. Anyway, so finished the book, super happy about that. Uh, oh, oh, went to a right here, right now conference. Um, so we're gonna knit one, we're gonna knit front and back. Uh, went to that conference, right here, right now conference, uh, which is um, run by the Willamette writers. Uh, I went to the one that was run in Salem. There, were two, there are two this year, I think. One of them is going to be at the Corvallis, Oregon branch. Uh, and that's that uh, event where writers show up and um, they bring their laptops or their notebooks and they write. We just all write together. And it's, it's a terrific kind of community feeling to write with other writers because it's such a solitary um, job. But to be together all writing feels like, you know, hey, there's other people out there doing this great thing that I'm doing too or the great fun that I'm having or the great difficulty. We're all in it together, right? So I went to that last, oh, last Saturday, had a wonderful time. Thank you all the people who came and spoke to me one-on-one. -on -one. You are all amazing. The range that you have as writers is um, just stunning to me. And I was so excited to hear your different projects and um, your questions. I hope I was helpful answering some of the questions and uh, go forward, continue, keep going. I'm very excited to see where each of your projects end up. And um, I hope that that little right here, right now was helpful. I know it was helpful for me to listen to the speakers talk about discovering your inner lion, I think it was. It's basically keep going no matter what sort of challenges come up because you can always find a solution for them. Uh, so great speakers, uh, terrific attendees. And thank you coordinators for putting all the sweat equity into that to make that all come together. I really appreciate it. I had a wonderful day. 
So that was fantastic. And um, if you went back at the beginning of my channel, I wrote, a, or I wrote, uh, I recorded a little where's Devon going to be thing. And that was one of the places where I said Devon was going to be. Um, so did you notice that? I just knit this stitch and then I pulled it off. That's because I'm supposed to increase front and back in every stitch, one stitch before the end. So I just knit this one and it needs to be a knit and a purl. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Oops, and then a knit. Okay. Also, I don't know if you can tell, but um, now that I have more fabric, you know, I've knit more on the, on the double pointed needles, knitting is a little smoother. It just, um, there's a little more room, it, the needles aren't running into each other as much. And so when I first started off, I felt like I was all like up here with the <laughs> needles like little. <laughs> but now that we have a little more fabric on, it's smoother, I can certainly knit quicker and it's uh, a little more comfortable in the hand. So uh, that is something that I've noticed in knitting in the round. It's always toughest right there at the beginning uh, when you're first starting because it's so fiddly. I just call it fiddly. It's got like just tiny amounts of stitches and super tight and maybe it's not joined together right and it's always fussy right at the beginning. I'm going to check my rows here on our Norman pattern that I have beside which says that now we knit another row and then we increase another row. So what this pattern is doing right now is it's um, every other row it's increasing and that's pretty common in toy patterns. It makes a relatively quick increase to uh, increase every other row Increasing every row is pretty drastic, and there aren't very many patterns in which that would be the, the way to go. So if you're ever thinking of modifying patterns, you're like, well, I want to increase it pretty quickly, I would recommend try increasing every other row instead of like increasing every row. <laughs> like You might be like, Gonzo, let's just increase every row. Back it off a little, try increasing every row and see if that gets you the, um, result that you're hoping for. Oops, was I off the screen there? Yeah, see, this is really gonna test my uh, my multitasking skills. <clears throat> what else is going on? I want to give a shout out to my best friend who runs a Twitch channel. She, if, if she hadn't have encouraged me to do this, y'all wouldn't be seeing this. She was the one who said, why not give live streaming a try or well not live streaming recording I mean I might give live streaming a try too but not today today we're just recording at the moment but she live streams and she is over on twitch which if you don't know what twitch is it's a platform for live streaming it's basically like a live YouTube video and it is most commonly used by gamers so people play their favorite video game and they have other people just tune in to watch them play the game. Why, you might say, if you aren't somebody who's familiar with something like this, um, let me tell you, I have, uh, my sons have been big gamers all their life and they've uh, always been into video games and it is super fun to watch somebody play a video game because <laughs> one, I'm not the one dying on the screen, but two, it can be very funny and very exciting. It's like watching a movie that, you know, the person in front of you is making that movie go. And so uh, if also like if you can't, maybe you don't want to get a certain game or you don't have the equipment for a certain game, you get on Twitch, somebody's playing that game. So you get the experience along with the community because people are chiming in and talking and the person who's streaming, of course, uh, is talking and narrating the story. And it's a lot of fun. So if you want to check out, first shout out to my best friend, and I'm gonna use her Twitch handle for this, and you should go give her a shot, try her stream. She is Bucket of Sunshine over on Twitch, and I'll put a link to her Twitch stream right here below my video. Go check her out. She has a positive uh, community. She doesn't allow negative negativity, so you will have fun if you go over there. Um, she <laughs> likes to play survival games, which it's pretty awesome. There's a couple of them that I've watched, uh, like Don't Starve. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's a stylized kind of cartoony style and you know you're gonna starve. This, this is what the whole, the whole game is about. You're gonna starve. But you can go a long, long time before you starve and it's about getting resources. You're a, a little guy with a, basically you start off with a little guy with a stick or something like that and then you run around this landscape trying to get enough sticks to build fires and then maybe trying to clunk some rocks to make flint and 
eventually going to build yourself a hut and you're going to hunt down plants that you can like plant and, and harvest so you have food and you got to go collect your water. And you're just this little guy running around doing this stuff as the clock is ticking as the day is going on. And it's a fun game to watch. It's, see, it's a fun game to watch people play. She plays that. She plays uh, Subnautica. She plays, she, hang on just a sec. Um, where did I put that? Oh, over here. She plays Ark. If you're into Ark, she plays Ark. Um, yeah, some, some like that. Anyway, go check her out one more time. Uh, Bucket of Sunshine over on Twitch. Best friend. And uh, if any of her community are here, hey, people. Uh, great to see you. Thanks for coming by. And you have got a great community over there with her. So I'm really um, pleased that you may have tuned in. And, you know, I'll be checking out that community more as I have a little more time to go peek in on Twitch streams. I don't right now, but... As time opens up, I'm going to see if I can pop over there. So let's see. How's our unicorn going? It eh, does not look like a unicorn. It is just kind of this weird <laughs> rectangular hat. But we're getting there. This is exactly what we want it to look like. We're going to go. So how big around is this? That's what we're looking at here. It's So our unicorn is probably about that big around when you stretch everything out. So we want it to be um, a little bit bigger than that. We're going to do another increase row and then we're going to do another knit row and then that might be where I stop. And then, well, not stop the video, but that might be where I stop and um, put the weight at the bottom. I brought some stuff that we, I could do that way. Okay, so last time I was on here, I was also talking about um, why I got into knitting, which was basically for stress relief and that kind of thing. Uh, question is, why don't I sell my knitting? <laughs> I have uh, several people who are like, oh, won't you please knit me a thing? I'll buy it. I'll buy it. I'd be happy to buy it, which is super sweet. Uh, but why I don't sell my knitting is because I need a hobby that doesn't have money attached to it. Isn't that sound strange? But I need some, I used to write as a hobby. You know, it's a, I always wanted to be a writer, but it was my hobby. I, I wrote for fun. There was no nothing attached to it. No money, no deadlines, no worries. It was just, just writing, right? And um, when it became a business, it very much is a business. Still a love, still if I weren't, you know, doing this for my full-time job, I would still be writing. It's in my blood. It's in my bones. It's just going to happen. Um, hmm. I think I was supposed to increase on that stitch back there and I didn't, so we're going to go back. Uh, anyway, um, so when I began writing as a career type, Thing, which was back in 20, 2007, well, started writing novels as a career thing in 2007, maybe a little before that, 2006, I sold my first novel. It was sold in 2007 and it was printed, I just lost stitches. Not hard, but I'm going to show you what happened. Basically this slip, this slipped off, this stitch, and it is currently not attached to our working yarn. Our working yarn is attached to a knit stitch and a, what appears to be a purl stitch. This is our increased stitch right here, these two guys. See that? Um, and so because they're still attached and the working yarn is coming out the last one where it should, we can just pick those up without having to like mess with anything. So really we only lost this one. So let me see if I can put that back up there. Okay. So when it comes to knitting, um, I like to keep it as a just for the joy. Just for the joy. I love knitting for the joy. Um, that isn't to say that I won't take requests I have before. You might suspect my time is a little limited. It is. Um, so when I pick on a take on a knitting project for someone, I'm doing it because I'm thinking a lot about you and um, I think you're a pretty awesome person. And uh, so mostly my knit things are gifts. Um, if I knit for giveaways, which I do pretty often, I've done some silly things. Hang on, let's see. What have I knit for giveaways? I'll see if I can cut the um, video to show you, but I've knit, I've knit an inside out vampire. <laughs> you turn them inside out, well one way he's a Nosferatu kind of vampire and then you turn him inside out and he turns into a bat. <laughs> I knit that for a giveaway. Um, I knit an inside out werewolf. Uh, he's one of the werewolves from my Ordinary Magic series. It's um, 
Jame. He's one of the firefighters there in Ordinary. So I knit a firefighter werewolf, Jame, and he has an axe that he carries around in his mouth. Not, not in the book, the toy that I knit. Anyway, he's a man <laughs> toy, a, just a guy in a firefighting outfit. And then you turn him inside out and he turns into a werewolf and he carries an axe. I will show you those. I think I have pictures. So, so the Nosferatu bat and then the werewolf. And then what else have I knit that I gave away? Oh boy, I gave away, I've given away stones. I've knit two, uh, two gargoyles of, from my Allie Beckstrom books. One tiny, he was like this, this size. And I might knit that one on camera and give it away too because I knit that without a pattern and just drew him up, knit him, said, hey, would anybody like this as a giveaway? Ran a contest, uh, people, somebody won them. And so I sent him off to that person. That's the only tiny stone in existence right now because I never made a pattern and I never made another stone. So I could make one here, maybe on the camera, you could see the pattern. I'll write it down maybe as I go and then we could give him away too. So I've knit stone as giveaway. I've given away gloves to go with the House of Mortals series, which that was a series about it's kind of a sci-fi urban fantasy. It leans a little more sci-fi, but it has that urban fantasy fast storytelling. It's about the future where there are these people that are called galvanized, and they're essentially Frankenstein type people who were changed because of an event. I'm not going to go through that because that's kind of part of the plot, but they are essentially immortal, but they're pieced together. They're pieces of themselves, pieces of bodies, kind of like Frankenstein. And I knit a pair of gloves for the main character who was Matilda and I gave those gloves away. That was also a pattern that I modified and never wrote down. I'll show a picture of them. Let me think. Let's see. The, so there was the, <laughs> the vampire bat, the werewolf firefighter, the Frankenstein gloves. Okay. What else? I have also given away, oh wow, way back when I first wrote the first Allie Beckstrom books, I gave away items that I thought the characters in the book would have. So I gave away uh, Nola's bag. I knit, a, I knit a purse. I gave away Xavian's beanie. I knit a beanie for him. And I don't remember what the other one was. Oh, oh no, it was another pair of gloves. It was a pair of black lace gloves that I thought Allie might wear to cover up her marks on her hands when she was trying to be fancy or something. So I have, I have given away almost something for each of my series. When it came to my steampunk series, I gave away, I didn't knit something though. I probably could have, I just didn't at the time. I made little, uh, my husband and I made little dirigible bookmarks. We, we created, <laughs> tiny little blimp bookmarks. I will post a picture of those too. I think I have a picture of them. Um, and we gave away a lot of those. I think we gave away, I think we made 30 of them or 40 of them. And those, those were for the steampunk books. Let's see. So what have I done for the ordinary books? Not nearly enough. That's what I'm saying. So I'm going to do the the unicorn this is one thing that I'm going to give away and hey if you have an idea of something that you like in the ordinary books that you'd like to see me try to knit give me a suggestion down below and I'll see if I can come up with something there's definitely plenty of ideas of what it could be from the characters or the place itself um, so if you have an idea for me let me know and I'll see maybe I can give it a shot so let's see the ordinary books don't have a lot of knitted giveaways yet that's part of what this is all about and I am also going to make a giveaway for the event that I'm going to be in in July, and that is the Readers and Writers of Seattle. It's a, you have to pay to get in, readers pay to get in, writers pay to get in too. But there, it's a big place with tons of tables with filled with writers who have books that you can buy and giveaways that you can get and there's VIP bags full of special little items that you can get from writers including books and other like neat things that go with the books or are just fun things for uh, readers to have like bags and t-shirts and all these fun things. I am going to make, my husband and I are going to make 
one of the things that I'm giving away up there. And I'm just going to tease you right now to say that you'll want to tune in and see what that thing is because I think it's a really fun item. And it's not going to be one of those things that you get at a conference and you're like, oh, that's fine. <laughs> Throw it out the next day because you don't need a million whatever water bottle, water, well, lanyards. It seems like there's always lanyards. Maybe you don't need another lanyard. This isn't a lanyard. This is something else. That event, though, is July 13th up in Seattle. If you're anywhere in the area, come on by. I'm going to have some fun free stuff to give away. A friend of mine, Diana Farrell Francis, who is a fabulous writer, will also be there, and she's going to be giving away some fun stuff. So besides there's books there that you can buy, and have signed by the authors. There's going to be some fun things that you can win. I think they're doing some raffles too. So that's, I'm looking forward to that event. I haven't ever been to it. And it's something that I think I would be, have a lot of fun at. So yes, I have done many a get a giveaway items for um, my books. I've, I've done pens and postcards and oh, Amazon cards and coffee cards and all sorts of things but knitting things there's sort of been a small selection so if you've won one of my knitting things you are one of few people who have uh, gotten them uh, including the two stones that went out uh, that being said I will never stop knitting just like I'll never stop writing so there will be more fun stuff coming up uh, this little guy to begin with certainly is coming up here soon all right, how have we done? We haven't made it that much further. We've just been knitting along, but you know, you can get the feel that we're making, we're getting some progress here. It's feeling larger because when I'm knitting, I feel like, here, let's just look at the needles. It just feels really stretchy. See this? Um, this is getting large. So now we're looking at a big, a big base. This is how big around the belly is going to be of it when it's sitting. So we are definitely getting toward about the size we want to get uh, on a unicorn. And what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to uh, pause the video just for a bit and take a look at my, at my stitches and see if I feel that I want to go any larger. I'm thinking I don't, but I want to kind of sit here and stare at it for a second. And then if that's it, then we'll knit up a couple more rows. And since you've watched me knit these, I don't know that that would be the most exciting part, but I will go ahead and knit a couple more rows. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create the filling for it. But just give me a little break and I'll be right back, okay? Let me set this down and I, I will be right back to you, so hold on. Thank you, see you in just a minute. <laughs> 